Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Schmidt, one of the pastors at Celebrate Church in Knoxville, Iowa. And I want to welcome you to our Celebrators podcast. Today's podcast is part of our Let's Go series, where you'll get to know people who have taken the initiative to share God's love in their communities. At Celebrate Church, our mission is to gather to go with the presence of Jesus. And the people you're about to hear from are doing just that. We hope you find their story encouraging. Let's go. At Celebrate, we want to be people that gather to go with the presence of Jesus into the world. And today we have Judd Nelson and Jamie Ball with us to talk about the racing community and the ways that the Lord has been leading them, both of you, individually and together. So we want to hear about you. Who are you? What do you do? How are you serving? Why? All the great things, guys. I'll let you go first. Yeah. Well, I'm Judd Nelson. I'm on uh, one of the pastors here at Celebrate. I'm also on the Marion County Fair Board, which helps oversee and run the fairgrounds and the racetrack. And I am a lifelong diehard sprint car fan. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever Depends actually driven? Ask. Well, have you driven one before? No, not yet. Literally never? Uh, no. We're working I've been on, in the two seater. We're working on that. Yeah. 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 He wants all, to haul that my car. All I need is okay. 60 grand and I can hop on this. <laughs> 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 we can make it happen for less, but. Yeah. Yeah. I knew you were both speaking English, but I have no idea what you both said. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Uh, my name is Jamie Ball. Grew up yeah. here in Knoxville. Never lived anywhere else, mainly because of Knoxville Raceway. And uh, 33 years old. Live with my wife, JC, and we don't have any kids. Just a bunch of animals. Mm -hmm. Whatever she brings home is what yeah. shows up and is there, and I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But just uh, love racing. Been racing sprint cars since 2010 and racing before that, and going on year 13 now okay and uh having a blast doing it with family and friends did your dad race or anything yep, yep. Um, my dad's Larry Ball Jr and okay. he ran from 98 to 2006 wow. took a little bit of time off uh, when he started his business and yep. then raced a little bit after that until he had to have a few vertebrae fused and stepped aside and became full-time crew chief for me okay. and uh, now he runs the show and I help run his business so it's a good 50 50. that's cool and he was a good racer was he that's awesome. Okay, so who are you serving and how? Like we talked, I mean, I, I entered it with the race community, but mm -hmm. like, what does that mean? Go ahead. I like how you keep looking at me. Yeah, respect um, your elders. Yeah, <laughs> so, your elders. you know, like we both mentioned, we're, we're lifelong fans. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things about going to a racetrack, no matter where it is, um, is everybody's there for the same reason, mm -hmm. right? So you can stop anybody and start talking racing and it gives you, it opens the door that then you can start talking about Jesus or wow. where they're at in their life or anything else. So, you know, with Celebrate being right across the track or the highway from Knoxville Raceway, you know, we're right in the middle of this, especially during Nationals time. So you have people from all over the world come to your doorstep and you can start the conversation with racing and lead them to Jesus. Hmm. Wow. I've never thought about it that way, that when you are at, no matter what it is, a sporting mm -hmm. event or race yeah. or whatever it is, that the commonality actually allows for a different kind of conversation. Yeah. So yeah. if you go to the Knoxville Raceway or if you go to an Iowa football game, yeah. everybody's there for the same reason. Right. That's right. You know, hmm. you go to the Iowa State Fair and everybody's there just wandering around aimlessly, yeah. which drives me crazy. But Yep. <laughs> just personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, kind of the same thing. Um, you know, I was saved in Judd's office August 21st of 2020, and wow. the true reason was our connection between racing. You yeah. know, he helped lead me here, and every time I bring that date up, he says he doesn't remember exactly what he said, but it must have been great. Mm -hmm. And uh, just God spoke through him and brought me here because of that racetrack. Yeah. I, like I said, I've never lived anywhere but here. Yep. And the way that I've learned that God uses you Kind of mm -hmm. when you don't know it or when you least expect it, it's probably been one of the best realizations that I've had. And uh, Celebrate Church and Judd are, are really, really huge part of things to thank for that. Wow, that's awesome. That's so beautiful. Okay, I have more questions, but we're going to stick to the script, and then I'm probably going to start interjecting other questions. Why do you have such a huge heart for this opportunity? I mean, it sounds like both of you grew up with it, mm -hmm. but is there other reasons, too, that make mm -hmm. you have a heart for it? 
Um, yeah. So the more you're around the sport, the more you get to know people and they don't just, you know, they become more than friends, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a family thing. And you figure out the inner workings of who people are that are driving and working on the cars and the world gets a lot smaller. Um, but in my previous life, as I call it, um, going to a lot of races and living a lifestyle that probably wasn't very healthy. Mm -hmm. There's still probably the majority of sprint car fans live that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I recognize the brokenness mm -hmm. in their eyes that I used to see when I looked in the mirror. So it's just a, a desire for them to be saved like I was. Yeah. To get through that brokenness. Yep. I grew up, I'm 33, I grew up for 25 years. I didn't have anything go bad. I had no mm -hmm. trauma. I lived a, had a fantastic childhood. My parents were great married still together happily and right. we weren't wealthy but we weren't poor and mm -hmm. I raced and did what I wanted and loved it and then I had some pretty rough times from age 25 to 27 and it led me here and kind of like Judd said I'd look in the mirror and struggle with my purpose like right. I didn't quite get why I was around why hmm. not like that I didn't want to be around but just didn't know like what that more was that I was missing yeah and you kind of for me I've gotten things in life at a very delayed point after they happened, kind of realized it. And I crashed at Knoxville June 30th of 2012 okay. and was life flighted, had a, wow. got a concussion, the steering wheel smashed my leg, had a bar go in, deflect off my seat, deflect off my ribs. It came out my collarbone and ripped yeah. out my back. Wow. And uh, I, I lived. Yeah. A friend of mine, Brian Clausen, that's now passed away in a race car, texted me and said, welcome to the Life Flight and Live Club. And hmm. when I was 22, that was just, comical, a feather mm -hmm. in your cap type thing, you know, mm -hmm. and when I really kind of started going through some not stellar things, mm -hmm. I felt like I was given extra time for a purpose, you know, I right. wasn't just out there to race and win, like, yeah, we spend a lot of money and a lot of time and we want to win races, but I feel like this has kind of given me mm -hmm. a new, more defined purpose, and so that's why we're starting this book called On Track, a 30-day devotional for racers by racers. Wow. Uh, we have a, a legal LLC form to kind of be ahead of the curve and, mm -hmm. and get it going. And we hope it goes big. And the whole purpose behind it is to bring Jesus to the racetrack. I've, yeah. I've spent every weekend of my life since I was born at a racetrack. Okay. And money and competition brings out the worst in people. Hmm. And it is a very competitive cutthroat world. And there's a lot of people that are, are missing what this hmm. book and what the Bible can offer. And I feel like that's been my purpose is that it's, and it's actually blown my mind. So we're doing 30 days mm -hmm. and it's, uh, we're calling it four racers by racers. So wow. I'm just writing one of the pages. Uh, Judd's <laughs> been collaborating with us and wrote mm -hmm. one of the pages. And then I've just picked people that are race car drivers, car owners, officials, wives, chaplains, wow. and just trying to raise awareness through different people. And mm -hmm. not just in this area from multiple different states and yeah. just trying to get the word out there and we're going to offer the book for free or a free will donation. Wow. And just, you know, my dream, if I can print 10,000 of these books and get them out to 10,000 people, think of the lives we can change. Mm -hmm. And it means even more to me to change lives in the racing world versus just mm -hmm. directly, you know, somebody for walking sure. down the street because it's what I classify as my people as my family. Yeah. yeah. And Jamie can probably speak to this, but you know, if you look back through racing history, there's always like every generation's had one or two drivers that have been really strong and outspoken in their faith. And they've always stuck out from the crowd. Hmm. Like they've always had respect uh, from the other drivers and from the fans. Hmm. And so it, it just shows me there's evidence that people are hungry for that. Yeah. But it's hard to break through that in the racing community because to be a racer, you have to have a little bit of an ego. Yep. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. But you, you know, you got to be stronger than the fear. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, and so nobody wants to admit that they need something other than themselves. Yeah. You know, but when you talk about the, the John Bankstons and Jan Oppermans and even Don Drouds of the mm -hmm. world who are open and outspoken about their faith, they stand out from the crowd. Yep. It's interesting you say that, Judd, because Mike and I have talked about, you know, there's such a bad connotation with the word narcissist. And he, as we were talking one day, he said, well, you want a doctor that's a little bit of a narcissist because you want a doctor to be able to walk into the medical room, to the operating table and be like, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. You don't want the doctor to be like, 
let's hope this goes somewhere. <laughs> let's hope right. I know what I'm doing today. Yeah. Um, and so like to have a little bit of an ego to be able to step in. I just, so one of the things I want to ask that is not on here is, and if this is too personal, we don't have to talk about it, but what, how did you come to faith? Like what, can I ask what was going on? How did this conversation start? I mean, yes, you've grown up in this area. Judd's been in this area. So I'm sure you've crossed paths many a times and at the racetrack, but I feel like it'd be real sweet if we could hear your testimony a little bit more, if that's okay. Judd tells me. Mine or his? I mean, you can both. Judd tells me you can't have a, a testimony without a test. So mm. I think we yeah, both that's got a story. Yeah. Great. Then I mean, let's go with both. I want yeah. to hear both. The mess is part of the message. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I've shared mine quite a few times here at Celebrate, but, you know, I was, in my previous life, I was at a racetrack somewhere on a Saturday night doing mm -hmm. things I probably shouldn't have done, and so church was on Sunday morning, and that was not interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, my best friend invited me to his daughter's baptism at Celebrate. I did not want to go, but I went out of respect for him, yeah. and the Holy Spirit completely wrecked me that morning, mm -hmm. and I left different than when I walked in. Wow. It was definitely the aha moment that people talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where like even Ange, my wife was like, something's different. Okay. So I dove in head over heels and, you know, went from never going to church to getting up in the morning to do devotions and wow. Yeah. And she figured out I was going to be a pastor long before I did. Okay. Okay. So that's awesome. Yeah. I went all in, changed yeah. my life. Yeah. So then how did this conversation happen in Judd's office in 2020? Huh. I'm pretty open. So um, I was married young mm -hmm. and divorced mm -hmm. and then lost some friends, just yeah. bad friendship things, kind of through the cutthroatness of racing. Yeah. And uh, then my dad had a, a business split and that was where I worked. And it was just, there was a lot of toxic things going on in my life. Yeah. And uh, God blessed me with my wife, JC. Mm -hmm. And we... <laughs> both kind of, we weren't looking yeah. for each other, but I suppose when you're not looking is when right. he decides to place someone in your life. So we were both kind of at points in our life where we needed something that we didn't know what we needed, but yeah. it was each other. And she ended up moving up here mm -hmm. and she grew up a big church goer down in, in Texas where she's yeah. from. And uh, she tried out I think this was actually the first and only church she tried out. Okay. And uh, I always wash the car on Sundays and she came here on a Sunday and came right back and was like, we have to go there next week. Okay. And I grew up Catholic mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I had no clue that you could have a relationship with, yeah, with God. That's real. I thought I, I was a checklist Christian. I mm. read the book, memorized the prayers, yep. went when I was told and that was it. Yeah. And uh, when she mentioned coming here, I was very calm and, and okay about it. I uh, had a friend, Justin Little, growing mm -hmm. up, and his funeral was here. And to this day, I'll, I'll still say that I've never walked out of a funeral feeling better. Wow. And that was here at Celebrate. There was just something different about it. Mm -hmm. So started coming here, and uh, through just some other kind of realizations of life that uh, the destructive path I was on without God mm -hmm. was not going to work well for me. And like I said, being comfortable with Judd, I walked in with my Bible and surrendered right then and there. And, wow. And like I said, I've struggled with things before on, in, in racing, you're all in or you're not. You're mm -hmm. not going to be good if you're not. And so I struggled to, to surrender that day because my, I guess my logical mind told me that to surrender, you had to give up everything and not like anything and not do anything that you did before. Right, right. So that was probably my hardest point of coming to Judd. Mm -hmm. to surrender myself to God and to accept Jesus was I didn't want to give up racing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like, I still don't know what I would do on the weekend if I didn't right. have racing. Like, right. It's just, no, that's real. it's in my yeah. blood and mm -hmm. it's what, it's why I get up every day and work two mm -hmm. jobs and mm -hmm. do what I do. And I left that day kind of with just a better purpose of like everything can coexist. Mm -hmm. In that God gave me a passion for racing for a reason. I just had yeah. to figure out how I was going to do wow. something about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people joke that racing is a disease. Mm. That once it gets in your blood, you're just kind of done for. Um, and I think that's true if you don't have a purpose with it. Yeah. Um, 
but there's such a rich opportunity in that community. You know, when I used to broadcast the races on the radio, you know, we had people listening from all over the world. Right. And you could just drop nuggets in there that nobody was really even paying attention to, but you let the Lord do what he does with that. Mm -hmm. um, I've had opportunities to do weddings in Victory Lane. I've done memorial services for Brian Clausen and in Victory Lane. Mm -hmm. And so you just have an audience that need Jesus that otherwise would never ask for it or go looking for it. Right. Wow. And I think a lot of people in it want Jesus, but it's known as a macho man sport. You have mm -hmm. to be, like you said, have an ego. You have to be confident. And I think they're falsely confident. They're not, they're confident putting on a facade out there. Right. When I, like I've got a new confidence that's really led to my success the last three years mm -hmm. based on the Bible, based right. on being comfortable with who I am and knowing that, yes, I want to go out and win this weekend, but if I don't, it's fine. Right. You know, and right. Judd is kind of my I remind him of that. confidant here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last year was a struggle mm -hmm. and I, I did a lot of complaining, to be honest, right. that it just wasn't good. It wasn't what I wanted. And he'd remind me that I still got to race a sprint car. I still got to do it with my mom and dad and my yeah. wife and my in-laws and my friends and the nights that I ran fifth, I wasn't thrilled because I wanted to be four spots better in first, but he's like, there's 42 other guys that right. would have killed to run fifth. So yeah. it's, I have a different perspective now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I can only imagine in something like racing, my background would be more sports, but if your purpose is coming from the winning and losing well, that's going to fail pretty fast, you know, like not, and not saying you're because you're going to fail, but just at some point you're not always going to be first, you yeah. know? And so what does that mean when you're not? And how do you have purpose that is all encompassing at all times? Well, it is even the best racer in the world. I think, you know, Kyle Larson mm -hmm. wins 20 or 30% of his races, which is astronomical to most people's right. 3%. Wow. But even somebody like him's not winning a hundred percent of the time. Right. So you have to be, you have to be built for the days you don't win. Yeah, for sure. I remind him every now and then that he was trying to keep score to a game that he couldn't win. Mm. Wow. So there's more to it than, you know, he gets to do what a grandstand full of people dream about doing once. Yeah. And he gets to do it with his family and friends. And right. So at the end of the night when he can roll the car in the trailer and go right. home with his family and friends, that's a win. Yeah. So... Well, it's just so interesting here, like from the first question we asked mm -hmm. to like, have you even been in a race car yet? You know, like he's one of them. That would yeah, be like, I would just yeah. love to be in the car. That's awesome. Okay. In a world with so many opportunities, and I feel like you've a little bit touched on this, so many opportunities to serve. Why this specific one? Well, yeah. And I think I touched on this earlier too, that, you know, is whether I'm walking around the pit area after the races or, you know, doing fair board duties and scanning tickets as people come into the track or sitting by people in the grandstands, it's not hard to look around and see the brokenness in mm -hmm. people's eyes. And I recognize that because like I said, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I know how it feels. And, um, yeah, the harvest is definitely there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just try to do my little part of bringing that harvest. Yeah. That's awesome. For me, it kind of all had an aha moment. So I was, I was a big daily, or am a big daily devotional guy. Mm -hmm. And Judd had given me a, a Bible from uh, Racers for Christ, their okay. uh, ministry yeah. in, in the race world. And throughout the Bible, it had late model drivers, not sprint car guys, but that mm -hmm. had wrote kind of their story mm -hmm. and their testimony. And so I'd do the devotional and then read one of those or whatever, and then being that you're not a race person, the <laughs> race fans that yeah. like late models and that like sprint cars are two very, very different okay. types different of human beings. Yeah. 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 Okay. They're almost like a sin, like the, the late model guy wouldn't pick up a sprint car book like okay. to that point. Okay. So I'm like, there's nothing out there to get this into the hands of sprint car people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's, you know, these pages aren't that hard, a scripture and right. a little bit of story and a little bit of your take on it. And I'm like, surely I can come up with people to do that. And JC and I got to thinking and was just like, well, let's, mm. let's come up with a 30 day book. You know, I didn't yeah. have to, at first I blow things out of proportion, like 365 days. And I'm like, I don't barely know that many people probably. <laughs> so just decided to do 30 and I think it's just a good start, you know, and we hope mm -hmm. that we can come out with 
volume two, volume three, right. and just yep. kind of get more people. Cause I think there is a lot of people in the race world that want to open up. They're just scared to, you know, yeah. with the way this world is of getting canceled and hated on over mm -hmm. certain things that people don't step out. But I think if we can set a precedent that stepping out, make it cool, yeah. you know, make it acceptable right. that I think we can definitely do that. And it's just a simple way that yeah. someone like me, like I said, hopefully can get these books into 10,000 people's hands. Right. And I'm excited for the this devotional thing because I think it will be huge. Yeah. And I'm excited for like volume three and four when those people write their stories and mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, I came to Christ through reading volume one. Wow. Come on. That's crazy to think about, huh? And ultimately, it's not about making you famous. It's about making the right. Lord famous, you know? Right. And so part of me is like, oh, that's so cool how just you joining with what the Lord has done in your life to share that story, how Jamie, your story or Judd's story or whoever else is in here's story, the Lord's going to do use that and plant a seed. And exactly what you said, volume three, four, five is going to be like, well, I read this one on this day. And yeah. I'm like, I think the best part about it too, is I don't personally know the people in the devotionals I read. Right. So you don't have to be a researcher right. to read this. Right. You, can, yeah. you can hit on somebody else's, you can relate with someone's, story and take on a scripture and maybe that's what sparks you yeah. you, don't, you know you can give this to somebody's grandma somebody's aunt uncle yeah. wherever in the world and just sure. because it does have a sprint car on it doesn't mean that you have to only be a sprint car racer just you have to want jesus that's right because i don't know about about you guys but you can read the same devotional or like one of my favorite ones to think about is I can watch the chosen with however many different people, but every time I watch it with someone new, yeah. I learn something new because they see it differently. So every year I could read the same devotional every single time and I'm always going to get something new out of it. And there's so many times where I sit back and I'm like, Lord, did you just rewrite that devotional? So I'll experience that <laughs> yeah. one today. And I never actually mark it to be like, read this on this day to like double check. But I do wonder those things sometimes because you just don't know what's going to lift up for you. So like we put a thoughts and how do you plan to put this scripture into yeah. action? And part of why I did that was on mine, I date what I write okay. in. And then when I read it again the next year, I typically, because I'm like competitive sort of, I guess, I like <laughs> cover it up and yeah. then I like rewrite my thoughts. And I'm like, oh, that was way different than last year. Yeah. Or, oh, that hit the same, you know, or whatever. And it just kind of fun to look back yeah, on to sure. think that like I read this page yep. three years in a row on this date. That's cool. That's really cool. And the other thing that I think is awesome about this devotional is these, these drivers that are writing in it, they mm -hmm. have a unique platform. Mm -hmm. Like people like Jamie and some of these other drivers, they're people's heroes. Yeah. They, they may not know Jamie, but they watch him every Saturday night. Yeah. They enjoy what he does. They cheer for him. Um, so for him, when he speaks yeah. Jesus' name to them, that makes an impact, for whether sure. he knows it or not. And so yeah. they read through there, and I don't remember who all was in there, like Dominic Selsey. Yeah. Very few people will ever have the opportunity to meet him, mm -hmm. but they know who he is. They watch wow. him race. So then when they get to know him through that platform, yeah, uh, I think there's some spiritual authority there, whether they own uh, that or yeah. not. I agree with that. So. It, you know, and yeah. after the races, you know, when he stands by his car and signs autographs, people, yep. I don't know, by the dozens come to him. Right. And he has that opportunity to speak life and truth to people. For sure. For sure. That's what I kept thinking at the beginning of this podcast was the platform both of you hold. So Judd and I literally just delivered Meals on Wheels. And I said to him at one point, man, you just know everyone. Because every house you passed by, he'd be like, and this person lives here, and this person lives there. And I was like, you just know so many people in this town. That's what happens when you live here as long as you I know. <laughs> It's true. It's true. But one of the things that Judd said to me in that moment was, not enough. Not nearly enough. And I was like, and that was an interesting comment for me to hear in a really beautiful way. Because I think the Lord has given both of you a platform um, and because of that, you have a specific anointing and purpose. Um, so yeah, it's just really cool to hear like the way the Lord's using that and that, yes, Judd might be, I'm going to say this word, but famous and Jamie Ball might be famous in Knoxville. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> the two of you guys might carry that kind of like people really know who you are, but the Lord's using it for his purpose and you guys are directing people back to the feet of Jesus mm -hmm. and people want to experience what you've experienced simply because you two have experienced it and they've watched life change happen. I think that's so cool and significant. Yeah. And I think Jamie spoke on this earlier. Like 
I've had friendships that are strained or even lost friendships once I came to Christ, especially mm-hmm. now that I'm a full-time pastor. Right. Um, and there's people that view me differently from my previous life now to being a pastor. Yeah. But I also know that when their life gets really hard or if they're in need of something, they call me. Yep. So I'll live in that gap. For sure. For sure. But I think God works in amazing ways. My uh, mom, mother-in-law, and wife delivered meals on wheels, I think this week or last week when I was when I was gone and out of town. Mm-hmm. And they delivered one to, it'd be Austin McCarl who races, his wife's grandma. Okay. And she let them know that before every race, she prays for Austin and I just that we end up Aww. safe. And just little reminders like that, you know, that, that they just happened. They felt obligated. Or they felt they wanted to sign yeah. up to do that and then get this little nugget back yeah. you know it's just i don't know when you open your eyes yeah things are amazing and i've said before i've prayed actually up here in upper room one night i'm like god just turn the volume up so i can hear you wow come and on. he replied and said or you just turn all the noise down because i've been talking the whole time wow i kind of just want us all to sit in that for one moment <laughs> yeah. sorry yeah wow that's beautiful how have you experienced jesus in this opportunity? Wow. That's a big question. Um, Let all the stories unfold. Like, don't be shy about it. Yeah. I mean, just countless ways. Um, you know, doing a wedding for a couple that I mm-hmm. never met. And I'll, I'll never forget. Jerry and Terry Berry were their married thing. I'll never forget that. But, you know, they live in Kansas. So I would have mm-hmm. never got to meet them or perform their wedding if it wasn't for racing. Mm-hmm. I would have never been asked to meet a bunch of drivers and fans in their deepest grief Mm -hmm. uh, when Brian Clausen was killed, if it wasn't for racing. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's just, you know, we talk about it, joke about it around here a lot through nationals. um, There's just so many people. That's the only time of the year that you get to see them. Mm -hmm. And you get to build those relationships and those seeds just go home with them, get scattered all over the country, well, all over the world, really. Right. So it's just a beautiful and unique opportunity that if it wasn't for the racetrack, Knoxville wouldn't have. Wow. Wow. And so my girls joke too that I know everybody and my (laughs) response is not yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. For me, multiple ways. Um, After accepting Jesus in 2020, I had had a really good year in 21 and I probably had five or six different people just, just, people I didn't even know. Hmm that would walk up and just be like, there's something different about you. Wow. Like, you know, not from conversation, just from being around me, I guess, mm-hmm. or whatever. And that was kind of a cool moment of like, all right, we're on the right track here. Like mm-hmm. things are, are going good. And just, like I said, the competition makes you angry sometimes, makes you jealous. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I, I catch myself a lot more now of maybe not a professional level of what maybe not be the right way, but I conduct myself differently at the racetrack. I, mm. I know, I've always known that kids and fans are watching, but you let your emotions get the best of you. And now I feel more in control of myself wow. by being more in contact with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and probably my coolest story that Judd and I shared, so we go to the Chili Bowl okay. down in Tulsa, yeah. and there was the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life. A, a kid crashed, started on the front row, he's only 16, mm. and he something happened, his seatbelts weren't done, and he flew out of his race car at full speed. Wow. And I felt like I could throw up. Like, it Mm. was just one of those moments where everything that could go bad did. Mm -hmm. And uh, Judd was there, and he came down, and myself and my wife, JC, and her friend, Tara Hall, Mm -hmm. and behind the grandstands, we all just locked arms, locked hands, Mm -hmm. and just prayed for 10 minutes. And it was the most spiritually connected thing Mm -hmm. that I've ever experienced and that kid walked out of that hospital the next day wow. with bruises. Wow. Come not, on. not a single broken bone, nothing. Come on. And has went on to race this year and won races. And mm. kind of like Judd and I have talked, hopefully one day that becomes his testimony. Right. You know, that right. he, he escaped death because right. of the prayer that happened there. And I feel like the racing world's so accepting and wanting it mm-hmm. that, like, that moment. You need to look through the grandstands and just see random people praying together. And I've never witnessed that at a track in my life. Wow. So I feel like there's things happening and hopefully people open their eyes to it. And, yeah, and for accept sure. It. For yeah, sure. I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, it was, you could hear tens of thousands of people collectively hold their breath. Okay. When this happened. Wow. And they had a track 
track chaplain there Mm -hmm. and he was giving updates but he would never pray on the mic Hmm. and i'm like that's when i went down to their seats and i'm like okay let's pray if he's not gonna do it we're gonna do it yeah wow wow how at celebrate can we support you the racing community i mean yes the church is open for the different opportunities specifically during nationals um dream big like, there's no limit. You can ask Celebrate to do anything. What are you asking? Uh, I guess I'll just ask for your yes. Mm. I mean, you know, Nationals, when this is shown to people, Nationals is right around the corner. Yeah. You know, we whether it's sitting out here in a lawn chair, helping park cars, mm-hmm. you know, all those people that pull in here, they're on church ground, right? Yeah. So there's an opportunity for you to speak Jesus to them. Um they're all right across the street. They're all coming to our front door. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of your yes. Yeah. Like I will speak that to them. Yeah. And you don't have to lead with it. You don't have to shove it down their throat, Mm -hmm. get to know them, get to know where they're from, build the relationship and friendship, and then take the opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm nothing special. I just want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Kind of the same. So like, I've got a new theory that like you said, shove it down their throat. It is never that I want to shove it down somebody's throat. It's that I want you to have so badly what I have. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to get what you don't know you can. Right. Wow. So I guess probably the biggest thing is just prayers for the racing community in general Mm -hmm. and for people like Judd and I that just want to be the advocate to get somebody here, to pull somebody in. Yeah. You know, for these books to help us get them out to people, even if it's just you want to come get a hundred of them and take them to your local church or somewhere else, you know, for these race fans that are here. Like I said, 10,000 is my dream. And I hope that we can someday surpass that, but Mm -hmm. just being the light to the racing community, being that little bit of reason why they went, walked away different or conducted themselves different and getting for me, one of the cool ways that I feel I've been able to bring Jesus to the track is I've met friends here at celebrate through the freedom Bible study Mm -hmm that I that now come to the races every week. So I feel like mm-hmm. now not only did I make a friend, yeah. I brought a fellow believer to the same area that I'm doing wow. battle at. Yeah. yeah. So it just bring people and yep. and be good people and, and pray yeah. when you can. For sure. Yeah. And when you look through these podcasts, when you watch them all, everybody says prayer. Mm-hmm. And obviously that is a huge vital piece of that. Um, and a lot of people have had really hard experiences that have a specific memory that yeah. or ministry that we can pray for. But as far as racing goes, I think it's prayer is important, but it's, it's more of just the yes, yeah. and being willing to have the conversations mm-hmm. and meet those people in their brokenness. Yep. You know, they're not wrong. They're, they're pre-Christians is right. what I like to refer to them as. Future, so, future believers. Future believers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so it just takes us doing it. Yeah. You know, you can pray from a distance, but it, it, you got to get out and do it. Yeah. I think one of the unique things about Celebrate being across from the racetrack is we're coming in contact with the racetrack every single week, you know? Right. Um, and so... Sometimes literally. <laughs> his tires bounced off the church. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, even us coming to church automatically gives us a moment of, turn. like, you're turning right into the church you look to the left or you're turning left into the church, you look to the right, there's the racetrack and we can immediately say a prayer and that the heavens would open and that people would experience more of the Lord. And I think that's just, just a really unique and sweet opportunity. Like the amount of people that we, when we tell people we go to celebrate church in Knoxville and we're like, it's right across from the racetrack. And they're like, Oh, and that's such like the racetrack is such a significant place in Knoxville that in the world in the (laughs) world right no exactly in the world and the lord has placed celebrate right across the street from the racetrack i think is just so beautiful like i feel like the lord is prepping this place for a massive revival you know like it's just so significantly located and i think it starts too with uh, the champions breakfast on friday Mm -hmm. i asked for people to Yes, Judge. Shameless yeah. plug. But <laughs> to volunteer for that because right. there's people coming to that breakfast that mm-hmm. are not right. coming here because of Celebrate Church. Come on, are we passing coming, these out? If I can get them printed in time. I haven't Let's talked go. about 
<laughs> I'm being serious. All right, yeah. to be serious on that. We'll talk about it now. Okay. My plan was to print 400 of them or however many there was and set one at each table so yeah. that each person got the first, or 200 people. Yeah. That each of those 200 people got the first ones of these printed so that through that them was coming. to be a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, I was going to talk about it later. I was <laughs> Sorry. getting them printed first. I think this is good. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. This is a great way of being like, you should sign up for this breakfast. Yeah. And please help because we need help. Please help. Please yeah. help. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But to get them. Like these people are coming to that champions breakfast uh, Friday at nine, mm -hmm. I think, and they're coming to see idols. Yeah. Right? Of the racing community. Yeah. Well, let's get the idol. Right. right? Get that in and their hands. What if people were like, "Hey, use this as the place to get autographs." Yeah. And then they're like, even if they don't pick it up and open it immediately. Well, then the people, now with the people forever. that are in here are drivers, right. and officials, and yes. car owners, and big names like you mentioned. You know, with Dominic Selzy and people yeah. from California, Texas, right. Right, Florida, wow, you know Pennsylvania that you don't get everywhere. So yep. if, I mean, if I can get you to pick one of these up because you want to go get thirty autographs, mm -hmm. even if you don't read it and it's on your shelf, I bet you read it at some point. That's right. I agree with you. Or if you don't, the next generation will. Yep. You know, yep. like no, I agree with that. Yeah, and the Champions Breakfast. Um, thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> It's, it's such a cool event for people like me because I'm a right. diehard race fan. I want to hear these guys' stories. Yeah. But the reality is a lot of the people that come, this may be the only the only time they walk in the door right. of a church that year, maybe they're in their lifetime. Yep. Their place of worship is across the street. Wow. So it's our opportunity to, to introduce them to the one true God. Yeah, that's right. Can I ask you guys a question really quick? So there's going to be race fans listening to this. Will you speak to them directly for a second? And I know this will be in the future, so yeah. it's always weird mm -hmm. to think about speaking directly to them, but you're going to be in their ear. You're going to, they're going to be watching. Tell them why, why Jesus, why do you love him so much, and what does he think about them? What mm -hmm. do they need to know about the heart of Jesus and <laughs> how, they, how Jesus sees them? <laughs> I'll go first while Judd cries. <laughs> for me, I want people to know about the peace and freedom that yeah. only he can give. I've had things go bad in my life, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. And I can't win every race, but I can win everything with God. Yeah. In the end, we have a very short amount of time here. Mm -hmm. Just like on the racetrack, it's a very short amount of time to try to win. But with Jesus, you're not going to lose. Mm -hmm. And if you just accept that, I promise you it'll change your life. It'll make relationships better it changes your perspective and your outlook like i have a different perspective now than i ever have that i i'm in a good season right now mm -hmm. but a bad season's going to come like right. it's not going to be perfect forever but i know with god on my side mm -hmm. and this is what i want people to know is that with him on your side you can get through anything mm -hmm. yeah come on yeah there's so many people and not all of them I don't want to paint that picture, but there's so many people that come to the racetrack and drown themselves. Um, and I did that for a long time and you can't find the answers. Um, yeah, it'll give you a purpose. It'll fill that void in your heart that you've been seeking to fill in so many other probably destructive ways. Mm -hmm. um, and like Jamie was saying, you know, the war's already been won. Mm. You just have to stand on the side of the victor. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it at that before I really start crying. I'm gonna make you cry. Thanks, Jenny. I'm gonna make you cry. So here, so if I'm a race fan and I say to you, all of the things I've done over at this race chat or whatever, like the life I've lived, he couldn't love me. Does Jesus love them? Tell them that. Go first. <laughs> Um, yes, he does love you. He made you on purpose for a purpose. He was, you are wonderfully and beautifully made in his image. And there is nothing that you can do to disqualify you from that. Mm. Um, I have tried and according to his word, I can't do it. It just, it's a matter of saying yes and surrendering. And surrendering is not easy. I know Jamie talked about that. And I've talked about that. But um, most things in life worth doing aren't easy. And it's not just a, whether it's easy in this life, it's an eternal decision. Mm -hmm.
for me, I think it's just a simple answer of mm -hmm. yes, anything you've done can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. He died on that cross for you. Mm -hmm. And that's mind blowing to think of, but he did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for all of us. And the way to earn his gifts are just to accept him. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. We've all done things that make us not perfect because there's only one perfect one and that's him. Mm -hmm. And I think once you can realize that what you've done is in the past, you'll look and have a brighter future. Wow. The, the verse that everybody probably knows, you know, the John three sixteen that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believed in him would not die, but have eternal life. And then 17 says that he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Um, there's not a long list of things that you can do that disqualify you from that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's black and white. There's yeah. a period at the end of that. He did it for us. Mm -hmm. That whoever believes in him will never perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. There's no condemnation. Yeah. And then my favorite verse that I was right before I walked into Judd's office was Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. And that has basically become my life scripture, my life yeah. motto, that as long as I have faith, I don't have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, that everything can come to fruition, and you're not always going to get what you want, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot better with Jesus by your side. Wow. Jamie and Judd, first, thank you. Second, I wondered if to end our time today, if we could pray together. And I would love to be able to bless you too, but I wondered if you two could actually start and pray for the racing community. Does that sound okay? Okay. So gracious Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks uh, for this opportunity to, to not only share uh, the mess that is within our message, uh, but to share your good news. Jesus, I just pray blessing over uh, the entire racing community, whether that be the drivers, the crews, the fans, uh, sponsors, anybody else involved. Jesus, we know that we, we need you. Um, and so I just pray for all those who have found their faith in you, that declare their lives in Jesus' name, that you would use them uh, to be a light in darkness, that you would use them, the racing platform, um, as a way that we can spread your kingdom. Uh, I know many people view racetracks as maybe the end of the earth, <laughs> um, but that's where we're supposed to take the message. So, uh, yeah, I just pray for blessing in that ministry and yeah we pray for protection over those involved in the sport that it wouldn't be grief uh, that brings people to you but it would be through joy yeah and we just thank you for the opportunity jesus to to serve you and to share your word with people god i continually every every day pray for the racing community that they will see the light that they will be led away from darkness and come to you knowing the gifts that you have they can't get anywhere else they can't get it a t-shirt trailer or entertainment by watching at the races that they can only get it through you I pray that you continue to put people other drivers and owners and just influential people in the race world that are willing to step out and preach your word and tell of your glory just so that other peoples will accept you and I just I'm eternally grateful for my own personal safety and the safety of everybody at Knoxville Raceway each and every night. I pray that you continue to watch over them, especially as we approach uh, the Nationals time here with the influx of, of race fans and teams alike, and that you just continue to bless any and everybody that steps on those grounds mm -hmm. and as they come and go through their travels here this coming month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus, and I want to pray blessing over Jamie mm -hmm. and the, the ministry he has of this on-track devotional. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be a tool that would that truly reach the masses? Mm -hmm. um, that people would read that thinking they're trying to discover more about their racing hero. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And they would discover you. Mm -hmm. So as he uh, tries to find people to write those devotions as he goes through the publication process and handing it out, Lord, would you just bless and anoint that entire ministry mm -hmm. 
I am ex expected and I'm excited uh, for the fruit that's going to come from that. So, yeah, Jesus be with him as he continues down that. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 says, By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his doors to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we were hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how the passionate patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't, st we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, I thank you so much for Judd and Jamie. God, I thank you for the ways that you have been pouring in and pouring in and pouring in and pouring in generously your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for the favor they both have within this community, specifically Knoxville, but the racing community even more specifically. God, I thank you that you have been making pathways in the wilderness and that you have been making streams in the desert and God that people are being led to both and down both because of the things you are doing and they are new and beautiful things within the racing community and so for Judd and Jamie God will we will we continue to see the outpouring that you are doing within them and God we bless them that their words would be anointed that their mindsets would be anointed, that their hearts will be anointed, that their hands, their feet will continue to be anointed, that they will watch and we will get to witness things unfold simply because of what you are up to, Lord. So thank you that they want to join in your kingdom realities and God that they can't wait to bring your kingdom realities on earth as it is in heaven, to the stands as it is in heaven to the racetrack as it is in heaven. And so we just say, come Lord Jesus, come. Be with, be within. We thank you for the men that they were, the men that they are, and the men that you continue to form them into. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Celebrate until next time. You did it. Let's go. Thank you for listening to the Celebrators Podcast. We hope you're inspired to find ways to go into your own community and share God's love. Thanks for listening, and let's go.